Uh, I'm Scott McKenzie's behind the camera right now. We just got this table saw back from the shop. The, there's a problem with the motor. They got it fixed. They sent it back, and we we're just doing a couple of test cuts to make sure it was ready to go in the field. And we noticed the fence was pretty far out of heel with the blade. And what happens is when the wood goes through here, it gets cut to this width. And by the time it gets over here, it's, it's thinner. So the wood binds up against here and it could possibly kick back or burn the wood. So we're, we need to adjust the fence. And while we were looking at that, we realized also that this blade is not parallel to this groove. This blade is actually twisted a little in relation to the table. So we're gonna do a full tune up on this. Um, starting with, we're gonna heal the blade to the table and then heal the uh, fence to the blade. That's a fancy term they call for, for paralleling. Um, so we'll do that and we'll show you the steps on how to do that. Alrighty, now first thing we need to do is gather our tools starting with owner's manual. That will show you the tools that you need to adjust your particular saw. It'll show you where the adjustments are and all of that. Uh, a lot of people don't have that, but uh, you know, look around, you might be able to figure it out. With this particular saw, to adjust it all you need is an Allen wrench. And then you need something that they don't provide that measures from this groove over to the blade and you need to measure it on the front side and the back side. So it's good to have something that'll slide in here. Um, usually, people use a tri-square and you measure here. And this is, this is pretty good. I don't like it because this is a flat surface here rather than a point. But for most cases, it's accurate enough and you can see it easily. I'm getting old, so I have a hard time seeing that. Then you have something like this, which is almost a hundred dollars. Um, these are real fancy and we use this to set up the contractor saw. We might do a video on that when we uh, double check that contractor saw, but that one reads to about a thousandth of an inch. Then these um, are about thirty dollars and it has a little caliper here and it has a little attachment that fits down in the slot and and it, this one actually barely reaches before it hits right here, the plastic. So if your blade's out too far, this one on this saw doesn't really work that well. And then I have my alternative, which is a little jig that I make um, to set up the saw. It takes about five minutes to make, and it's three pieces of scrap wood and a couple of screws. Are we doing it at the end of the video, or are we doing it now? Okay, let's make... Mackenzie convince me. Let's, let's make one of these now, um, just to show you how to make one, and... Then we'll set up our table saw. So to start making this jig, you take your piece of one by four material with about an inch in here so that you can adjust your little screw and mark where you wanna put, attach this piece to it. I'll use a square, square this up. So I know this piece is gonna be going right here. Now I'm gonna take this piece and cut it so that it's a little thinner than the width of this board. All right, so I cut this piece down and I'm gonna attach it with these screws. I'm gonna um, countersink the head, just for kicks. And then attach this piece. Now, I'm gonna put a screw, one of these screws in here Drill a little hole here that's just smaller than the threads on here, which is the shank width. Screw in and have that as my adjustment here. Let me do that. Make a little pointer. And when you tighten these two to get together, it makes it makes it so that you can turn those and the whole screw will turn. Makes it easier to turn as you can see. And then you want to set that to start. I noticed that when I put this in the groove, it is a little bit loose. So I'm just going to put a little piece of tape along this edge to cut it. 
And now, nice and tight. Okay, now that we have our healing jig made, we will start to heal this saw. And what you want to do is you want to pick a tooth, any tooth, and mark it. I'm going to mark this tooth right here. And you want to pick a tooth that has a sharp point on the side that you're using your jig, your heel. Because these tooth go back and forth. And I'm going to set this right to the tip of my tooth and I'm going to extend this little guy till it just barely touches. If you can see that. Okay. Now you want to turn your blade so the same tooth is on the other side and measure that. Okay, so I need to move this blade so that it goes that direction. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so the adjustments on this saw are right down here. Two big screws that tighten the motor to the table. And then there's a little adjustment knob in the middle. And when you turn that, the blade, it has a cam on it, so the blade actually moves back and forth. So first I'm going to loosen these guys up. And then, those were actually pretty loose already. And then, this is the adjustment cam right in the middle. And if you see, I don't know if you can see both at the same time. But as I move this, it will, the blade moves back and forth slightly. Okay, so I'm gonna move that. I'm gonna turn that until it touches my pin. Tighten these up a little. And now I'm gonna double check. And here's where it tends to get tedious because you basically move it a little, check it, tighten it, move it in a little, check it, tighten it. That looks pretty good. Just for kicks, let's measure it against this guy. Okay, I'm gonna take this tooth, set this on zero. Looks like it's a little lower than, or a little past one here, and set to zero there. Let me go over here. Let me see. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we healed our blade to our table. The next step is to heal the fence to the blade. Then we'll take a couple of test cuts and see how we did. I wanted to go with the manufacturer's suggestion, but they suggest take a T-square, a framing square, and put it here and then flip the framing square over 
to check this side. And you can see that it's out, but that just seems really weird to me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this frame and square and set it so that it's touching two teeth. I'm assuming that this is gonna be the same width all the way across, and I'm gonna move my tables, my fence. Ooh, so I've already hit on that side. There's two screws on the top. When you loosen those, it loosens the blade from the T-bar, and you can just tighten them back down when you get it set where you want it. And then bump it over. Sneak up on it. Now lock it down. And now, your fence should be square to the blade. Looks pretty good. Touching both sides there. So now we'll uh, put the riving knife back on and make a couple of test cuts and see how we did.